Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley speaking to you from Washington, D.C. Now, the good news this past week, of course, is that the warmonger coalition has failed. The reactionary Republicans, the bigots, the reactionaries, the warmongers uh, have not been able to stop this Iran nuclear accord. So with that, uh, that is at least a good half step away from the brink of general war. And it also points out the tremendous disarray of the reactionary Republican Party. The Republicans are in bad shape. Um, First of all, their inability to stop this, right, despite the fact that they do control both houses. Uh, It was 42 votes to let the deal go through and uh, 58 votes. There were four renegade Democrats who should not be forgotten. That would include Ben Cardin of Maryland, a right-wing Democrat who came in here uh, in recent years uh, with a lot of money and uh, rolled over some, you know, more qualified contenders. In particular, uh, it'd be perfectly normal for Maryland to have a black senator, but no, it had to be Ben Cardin and his his posturing, right? His arrogance in this debate, posing as an elder statesman when he's really a political hack. This has gotten some of us fed up, and so he will probably face uh, a primary challenge, if if, if not more. He'll be primaried, Ben. You're going to be primaried. Uh, Then, of course, we have uh, Chucky Schumer, uh, his wife. As far as I can tell, uh, last time I was in New York, uh, I was being told about how Chucky Schumer's wife was implicated in some phase of a recent – well, not recent anymore, but maybe five years ago, uh, a crash of the Staten Island ferry. Somehow his wife involved in either in the fact or in the cover up. Uh, and uh, of course, then Menendez, Menendez on his way to jail, rightly indicted for corruption. Uh, and there was one other. I forget who it was. Right? Maybe maybe somebody from uh, from a problematic state. But anyway, four renegade Democrats, but that was not enough for the uh, for this thing to be torpedoed. Uh, it's a very interesting object lesson for people who tell you that the Israelis control the U.S. government in every phase. How about this? Because this sure doesn't look like it, does it? So maybe that will uh, clear the air and open the door to more uh, realistic and rational uh, thinking. Um, even here in uh, in the Washington D.C. suburbs, uh, in the Rockville Gaithersburg area, um, driving around uh, yesterday uh, in the course of the vote, what do we find? Uh, a uh, demonstration right at the office of our very slippery Democratic Congressman Delaney. Uh, we had a demonstration at his office near the so so called Rio Complex in. Gaithersburg, and these were people from uh, Peace Action Montgomery in particular, and there were some others, um, different groups, different presidential candidates. Uh, Take a look at my Twitter. You get to see what this looked like. And they were already aware that uh, there were poison pills, and some of those poison pills to try to bring down this deal uh, later on came from the Cardin Corker Bill, which was the way that this was uh, this was uh, considered, it's really unconstitutional, right? The p- president runs foreign policy. FDR did executive agreements. How about destroyers for bases? Was that a good idea? You bet it was. Could the Congress have passed it? No. Too many reactionaries, isolationists, Nazi sympathizers, fascist lovers at that time. And I guess not, not that much has uh, has changed. Anyway, this reached down, I think, into the social fabric that people don't want another war. And they don't want these demagogic politicians, uh, be it Netanyahu or anybody else, who always ready to fight to the last American. It's just uh, despicable. Now. Uh, there will be further attempts, right? Today, the clown show 
of the uh, Republican House of Representatives, they, they voted courageously to torpedo the deal. The problem is it was all too late. And all the people who came out right in the last days, whether it was Colin Powell in favor of the deal or the Donald Trump, Ted Cruz uh, parade of has-been misfits, backbenchers, sociopaths, on the uh, very poorly attended, very poorly attended uh, West Front of the Capitol. Uh, th this is all in vain, right? They all waited until the thing had actually been decided uh, behind the scenes, uh, which is very interesting. So uh, there will be further attempts by Mitch McConnell blinking through his glasses when the sun comes out. Uh, he's going to try to get uh, the uh, filibuster broken and therefore this odious thing brought to the floor of the Senate next week. That will fail. Notice also the hypocrisy. Oh, my God. Cornyn of Texas, the majority whip, and McConnell. These are people who have been organizing a continuous filibuster for the past six years. And now they say well, this, this should be a 50 vote ceiling. This should be a 50 vote threshold to get it passed. Right. Absolute, unbelievable hypocrisy. And of course, they say too bad it's so partisan when we had the cottonmouth, Senator Cottonmouth of Arkansas was popping off as soon as the wire services said a deal had been struck. Cottonmouth said, no, no, uh, got to vote against it. And remember, Cottonmouth is the one who wants war. If war comes, remember Cottonmouth. He's the one who demanded it. And of course, it's going to be a cakewalk. Uh, now that we have we have various uh, Russian forces in Syria, uh, nobody knows exactly how many, which kinds, or I certainly don't. Um, watch out, because it won't be a cakewalk, will it? There are, there's, there are various reports of, of weapon systems that would be quite quite formidable. Now, the uh, the the House, they are legal cranks. Remember, every libertarian is a legal crank, right? The Constitution was never passed. Uh, amendments to the Constitution were never were never passed. Uh, wholesale rewriting based on on virtually nothing. So these these libertarians now say, oh. The clock had not been triggered because Obama hadn't gotten all the information about the technical agreements, the so-called side deals between Iran and the International Atomic Energy Agency, which will carry out the inspections, right? Not the U.S., because this is uh, the five permanent members of the Security Council, U.K., U.S., Russia, France, China, plus Germany, plus the entire European Union. They're all involved. So they work through the IAEA for these rednecks and yahoos. That's not good enough. Uh, but now they say and, – and, and the clock had never started, so this is all illegal. They're going to go to the courts. What was the other one they were going to sue Obama for? I forgot. It's lost in obscurity. Uh, this is hopeless. So the court route will, will pass. Uh, and they, with this, the reactionaries get another point in their – list of complaints, their cahier de doléances, where they can say, oh, Obamacare, how awful, worse than concentration camps. Uh, and now, oh, the Iran deal, how awful, uh, and all sorts of rhetoric thrown on that. Now, I think from a technical uh, and interesting point of view, we note also that there were 25 or so Democratic renegades in the House this afternoon. Uh, but that means nothing because the Senate has already blocked it. So it takes two to tango. And even if they could get it in this round, they couldn't get it to override the Obama veto because that takes two thirds and they're nowhere near it. 67 in the uh, Senate. So um, it's a Republican lockstep. We'll be back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in uh, Washington, D.C. One shocking aspect of this debate was Bernie Sanders, right, the wonderful hero of the mushheads, right, the mushhead from Vermont uh, who wants to be president and is actually now leading, according to some polls at least, leading Hillary in New Hampshire, leading Hillary by one point in Iowa. Bernie came out there, and in his speech, let me quote him, I heard it with my own two ears, 
The military option must always remain on the table. I will answer with the words of Putin when uh, we heard that from Bush about 10 years ago, right? 10 years ago, Bush said the military option remains on the table. Well, the answer to that is take it off the table because it's a threat to the peace of the world, Bernie. People have got to wake up to the fact that Sanders is a full-fledged warmonger. He's a crypto warmonger, and that's the worst kind. We'll be back on him in just a minute. He also, if you see Bernie, here's what you do. Say, look, Bernie, the Saudis are committing genocide in Yemen. They're committing genocide against the Houthi rebels and other and, and civilians who are there. Uh, Bernie, how about condemning Saudi Arabia? No, he doesn't want to do that. There's a whole article here in Counterpunch, August 27th, 2015. I hope we can devote some attention to this uh, later on. Bernie is somebody who believes that the Saudis ought to police the entire Middle East. Well, Bernie, I'm sorry, the biggest state sponsor of terrorism is your friend Saudi Arabia. King Salman, who do you think put the foreign rebels into Syria. Who's paying for them? Who stages a lot of that stuff? Saudi Arabia and Turkey, right? The Muslim Brotherhood uh, combo or uh, something of that uh, sort, right? So the Saudis, right? Bernie, are you a monarchist? Is that really American, the way you, the way you look at that? So that's, uh, that's Bernie. Um, so we, we are hoping for the best. Now, here's the problem. The problem with this is when it comes to these things about violations, right, and how they're going to know there's a violation, the first thing you have to remember is don't believe the CIA. Do not believe the CIA. Uh, they're going to, the CIA, I bet within six, nine, 12 months is going to come forward and say, guess what? We found that they're violating the treaty. That's ultimately the firewall. Now, uh, this is not speculation. Let's look back. Quite a similar case. United States-North Korea agreed framework of 1994, the DPRK, right, Democratic People's Republic of North Korea, capital Pyongyang, hermit kingdom, communist state, impoverished, whatever, failed state, but with uh, some capabilities. Uh, in 1994, the U.S., uh, with, with help in the background from Japan, South Korea, some others, they signed, uh, the Clinton, Clinton administration signed an agreed framework which said, we are the U.S. is going to deliver. We're going to deliver fuel oil to you, petroleum products, and we are going to build for you light water reactors because with light water reactors, it's virtually impossible to get anywhere on a nuclear bomb project with that. So please, DPRK, shut down your other uh, other reactors, right? Soviet designs, but now take these light water reactors and. This deal was reneged on by the U.S. The U.S. torpedoed that deal. All this stuff about, oh, Iran, they never maintain their commitments. How about the U.S.? Do they remain? Do they keep their commitments? Well, in this case, not. And if you look at the morning briefing from yesterday, I'm sorry, from today, from today, go to toply.net. Take a look at the briefing. You'll see uh, what Secretary of uh, Assistant Secretary of State John Kelly did with this stuff? He took an F, uh, CIA fact sheet and used it to blow up the accord. So watch out for the Mad Dogs in striped pants over at Foggy Bottom. Watch out for these CIA uh, gangsters and racketeers. Uh, watch out for all of them because they all stink. Uh, and uh, war, I guess, is uh, in some cases what they what they prefer. So this, uh, this cannot be allowed. Don't let the Iran nuclear accord go the same way as the uh, DPRK deal. Although, even in that case, right, it shows all of this apocalyptic rhetoric, uh, so far, at least in the Far East, just hasn't happened, has it? Uh, so somehow, Japan is still there, North Korea is still there, South Korea is still there, Taiwan, so forth. They're all still there, somehow. So uh, maybe... Uh, anyway, we can we can put all this in perspective. But now we want to hang on to this to this deal. Now, in terms of the situation among these reactionary Republicans, you have to figure that the Trump upheaval has really gotten some of these Tea Party lunatics into high dudgeon. For example, 
as I report in the uh, the daily briefing today, uh, 